everyone. This is Kat of SpookyMoon.com. I've been working on a card for an Edward Gorey swap, and that's what we're going to work on today. This is called Dream Woman, and the art is by Edward Gorey from a cover for a book by Wilkie Collins. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. First, making the background. Now, what, I, what I'm using here is just a piece of gray cardstock, 8.5 by 11, and I have uh, taken a drop of plain black Ceram coat and put it in a cheap aqua brush and filled it with water and shaken that up nice. So I have a gray wash here and I'm going to squeeze this a little bit to get it going. And what I'm going to do, if I can get this in the camera here, is just drop from the top of this page to make little drops going down. When I get to the end, I'm going to tap it off on the bottom. I forgot to mention I'm also using one of my spare craft supply bins here to, to catch things. And uh, just finish off the other end. And if I want to fill in any spots, I can do that now. going to put this to the side to dry. I have the dried cards cut into two and a half by three and a half sizes and I've cut it so that the drips go lengthwise and now I'm going to use a block printing press to put the image on because this stamp is a little bit finicky and also when you're doing a lot of these a block printing press will save your hands because you don't have to put all that pressure on with your fingers. Get this good and inky and I just got my finger on it so I'm going to ink up the bit where I smeared it. There we go. And place it carefully where I want it on the card. And bring the press down. I'm going to hold it so it doesn't swing too much. I'm going to put some pressure on it. Give it a second or two for the ink to all soak into that card. And I'm going to lift it very slowly, just in case the plate decides to stick to the stamp, as it sometimes does. Lift that up, and I've got a very good impression. Next, I want to start adding some texture to the card with a technique I call double embossing. That means we're going to wet emboss with embossing ink and a stamp, and we're also going to dry emboss with a texture plate, and I'll show you that in just a moment. But first we're going to use this text stamp for the background of the card with just embossing ink and some clear embossing powder. I love this text stamp. You can't actually read it very well, but it gives a, a very um, mysterious mood, which I think suits the card. bring the old tub over and because this entire card has embossing ink on it I'm going to do it half at a time so I don't end up pouring embossing powder all over my fingers and again because it's embossed all over I'm going to hit it in the corner straight down so it doesn't blow all over the place And as soon as that is embossed, I'm going to come in and hold it with my bone folder so that I can do the rest. And you can see this has created a really nice watermark effect. Next we're going to dry emboss. and I'm going to do text on text. I have a text embossing folder by Cuddlebug and I'm actually going to put the card in there backwards so that the letters are impressed rather than raised. Put my little folder together and run it through my Sizzix Texture Boutique. It's just a little thing which is mostly why I bought it because I don't have a whole lot of room here. I 
love dry embossing. I love the character it gives a card. And we'll bring this out even more with our next step. Okay, I'm going to use a couple of distress inks on the card. I'm going to use pumice stone and black soot. And I'm applying them with a plain old makeup wedge that you can get a whole bag of at the dollar store for a dollar or cheaper sometimes. Get some uh, ink on the makeup wedge. And this is the pumice stone that I'm applying here. And I'm going to apply it just down the sides, kind of with a light hand, because what I want to do is bring out the lettering. And it's a very subtle effect, but the original embossing resists the ink. So it will also come up a bit as I do this. and I can wipe along there to get a little more of the ink off the uh, originally embossed text. I don't know if you can even see that. It's, it's a little clearer in person. Okay, and it kind of looks like she's standing in a column of light there. And I'm going to do the edges in black soot, and I'm going to go with a very light touch here, bringing it in from my scratch paper to the edges of the card. I'm going to go a little bit harder on the corners because I'm going to round those and I want my edges to still show up. And she's almost done. I'm doing the back before we finish her up and around her corners because I want the back to already be attached when the corners are rounded so I can do those together. Now for the back I wanted to stick with the melancholy gothic mood that I've got going for the rest of that and I didn't think a regular old printed label would do that. I thought that would break the mood. So what I have brought in is a, a piece of plain black cardstock cut to ATC size and some lovely washi tape. It's translucent and it's this black lace. I'm just going to leave the ends torn and put them on a little bit crooked. And if it's a little too long, I can just tear that bit off. It still looks just as good. And now I'm coming in with a plain white jelly roll pen. I'm going to write the name of the card. And you have to write kind of slowly with a jelly roll pen, which is good for my handwriting. Next, I'm going to come in with a bit of Brilliance Moonlight White and give it a signature stamp. going to turn it over and put some tape runner on it. And this is a Thermoweb, which I really like. I've tried so many tape runners and so far I'm really liking this one quite a bit. It doesn't get tape everywhere I don't want it. Very carefully place her on there. And that turned out pretty well. I'm going to punch your corners. Now I use a We Are Memory Keepers Cropodile, Cropodile Corner Chomper. It uh, can chomp in half inch and quarter inch corners. And it is by far my favorite corner chomper. I have never met better. And there she is, Edward Gorey, Dream Woman.